Corley, good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here uh, this afternoon. As you uh, may well know, we are a jazz club, but um, Tuesday nights are the night where we kind of do... Oh, can we turn that off? Sorry. Um, it is. It's very dramatic. It all turned off. Um, Tuesday nights are the, the nights where we kind of go uh, off color. You know, is that the right thing? Yeah. So uh, first first Tuesdays of, mo of the month, we do um, an electronic and ambient series um, curated by Steve Roach, which has been uh, really fantastic. And um, second Tuesdays of the month, we do um, a, an acoustic singer-songwriter roundtable that's hosted by the uh, Tucson Folk Festival. And um, fourth... Tuesdays, we're starting a new uh, flamenco uh, residency. So the fourth Tuesday every month, we're going to have um, uh, flamenco, and that's curated by AR Flamenco, which is a, a, a group here in Tucson. And uh, tonight is the first, hopefully, of many uh, kind of contemporary chamber music uh, series. That'll be the third Tuesday. And um, we're actually, hopefully, going to be partnering with uh, St. Andrew's Box Society. Is that the name? St. Yep, right, St. Andrew's Fox Society, to present um, living composers um, and contemporary uh, classical music, although I don't know if it's really fair to call this classical. I mean, we are using, um, you know, violin, that's kind of classical, I guess. But other than that, it's, it's kind of a contemporary chamber music, or specifically tonight we're, we're playing what a lot of people refer to as new music. Um, the irony is that all these pieces were written in the 1960s, so they're over 50 years old, but still can considered new and uh, contemporary. So we're going to be playing pieces by um, Frederick Zevsky, Phil Glass, and Terry uh, Riley. I describe this music as conceptual. It's conceptual chamber music because uh, the the notes are not written in a, in a traditional score. And some of you will see there's some uh, sheet music on your tables, share with a neighbor if you don't have one. Um, and the one thing you'll find in common about all of these pieces is that they're written in cells. So they, they're all numbered, you know, 1 through 65, 1 through 35, 1 through 53. And the idea is that they're open-ended arrangements, and it's up to the performers to decide when you go from one cell to the next. Therefore, no two performances of these pieces will ever be the same for better or for worse. Um, and um, the, uh, the first piece we're going to open with is by Frederick Zevsky. This was written in 1969. And I'll just give a little context before we play it. Um, it is inspired by a book, uh, a, a French book that, uh, what's the title of it? Uh, it was written, oh, it's called, it's cut off here. And it, was, it was written by Francois uh, Rebelais. And in the book, there's a, a scenario in which uh, this cat, Panerge, uh, goes onto a, a ship to purchase a sheep. And the, uh, it's, a, sh it's a, a sheep ship. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have, you don't see too many of those nowadays, but a sheep ship, this is you know, back in the day. He goes onto the sheep ship to purchase a sheep, and um, the sheep merchant, Dindemalt, you don't find many people with that name nowadays either, so then it all uh, sells him a sheep, but then it, immediately Panerge feels that he's been ripped off, that he's been overcharged for said sheep. So he then takes another sheep and throws it overboard. But sheep, doing what they do, they follow each other. All the other sheep start jumping off the ship and they get into the water. Uh, so the piece we're about to play is uh, inspired by those events and what we're going to do is we're going to perform the 65 note cells in an additive way, meaning that we're loading the sheep on the ship, note by note, and then once all the sheep are on the ship, we're going to start tossing them off, and we'll be subtracting. And if you see, uh, you should have the instructions in front of you. Um, it says, uh, uh, in the melody, never stop or falter, always play loud, stay together as long as you can, but if you get lost, stay lost. Do not try to find your way back. That is very difficult to do. It's, it's, uh, so we'll do our best to get nice and lost for you. Um, 
And then it says non-musicians are invited to make sound perfectly very loud. So that would be all you. I'm generally not a, a fan of, of uh, audience participation. But if you feel like bleeding at any point, uh, you're more than welcome to do so. But um, I'll, I'll introduce the, uh, the ensemble a little bit later. I feel like I've talked enough. And we're going to attempt now uh, Frederick Zewski's Les Moutons des Pommiers from 1969. Thank you.
and we messed it up because none of us got lost. <laughs> Darn it, we'll get lost in Oprah. We all got plenty lost on that, but that's, that's the point, we follow directions. Denali Kaufman holding it together on the piano. Yeah. In our string section tonight, we have Ben Nesbitt on violin and Vicky Brown on violin. And Carl McElrath on the big violin. Um, so yeah, we started with the one that's most challenging for us. Now we're going to play the one that's going to be most challenging for you. This is uh, Philip Glass's Music in Fifths. Um, so your first year in, in uh, Music school. I don't know. How many of us went to music school up here? Did we all? We all oh, Marco, you didn't go? Vicky, did you go? To high school. Oh, all right. Could have fooled me. You learned your first, uh, first year of music school, Music Theory 101, is you don't play music. You don't uh, harmonize a melody in fifths. You know, there are all these rules when you are harmonizing a melody. You have to have certain things have to step a certain way, and you always want to avoid parallel fifths because that's bad. So Philip Glass went to music school, and he was told that, and he said, "You know what? Screw that! I'm going to write an entire piece that's completely in parallel fifths." And that's the story behind this one. So um, this is uh, also from 1969. Oddly enough, 1969 was a good year. It's the you know, year after the summer of love, I think. There may have been a fair amount of drug use involved in a lot of these compositions, but this is uh, Philip Glass's Music in Fifths. Come on, Mitchell. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and those of you reading along, you guys just have the first page. It's actually six pages. so. If, you, if you're reading along on the first page, then just close your eyes and let it wash over. Very subtle changes. I mean, this is, this, uh, <laughs> Philip Glass is kind of one of the uh, pioneers of what's considered min minimalism, minimalist music, meaning that, you know, the harmony and melody is, is pretty minimal, but you have to listen to the subtle changes throughout everything. And um, so we have a lot of groupings and twos, threes, and fours, and uh, as you're listening to this, just uh, you can pay attention to those subtle variations. <laughs> 